Alright, so now we're going to be solving an EER diagram problem to uh, maybe understand it a little bit better because practicing will make it better, I hope. So, yeah, as the question reads, an organization depends on a number of different types of person for its successful operation. The organization is interested in the following attributes, SSN, name, address, and telephone. A person may have multiple telephone numbers. Three types of uh, person are of greatest interest: employees, volunteers, and donors. So, as you can, as as it as it suggests, person is one generalized entity, and employees, uh, volunteers, and donors are its subclasses. Employees only have a date hired attribute, and volunteers only have a skill attribute. So, these are the specialized attributes, and um, uh, donors only have a relationship. Blah blah blah. All right. So let's just draw it a little bit and then we'll continue on to the next part because for me, it's like if I don't uh, start drawing from now, I forget what the question actually meant from the beginning. So let's just draw it out. All right, so we have a person's entity. And the qualities that a person has are, the attributes a person has is um, SSN name, address, and telephone. SSN, which is obviously a primary key. SSN, name, address, and telephone number. Uh, well, in the telephone number one, we have a person may have multiple telephone numbers, so which suggests that this is a multi valued attribute. Because this said it's multiple, so excuse my drawing. This said it's a multi, uh, multi it has, the, a person may have multiple telephone numbers. All right, so telephone. All right, so a person may, uh, then three types of persons are of greatest interest. All right, so let's just draw the subclasses. We'll specify later if it's a distinct or overlapping. We'll continue on reading the question. If it's not specified, then we can use our own assumption. Okay, so the entities that we have are three, employee, volunteers, and donors. Employee, volunteer, and donor. All right. So employees only have a higher date and um, volunteers only have a skill attribute. So in, wait, let me just put the subset sign. All right, so employees have a higher date, age date, and volunteers have a skill attribute, right? So yeah, skill attribute. And donors only have relationship uh, donates with an item that has name and number. So donor does not have a specialist attribute, but it has a relationship. And it's called donates. All right. So donates and then donates an item with an, which has a name and number. So donates an item. which has a name and a number, which could be our prime, uh, key attribute. All right, so um, a donor must have donated one or more items. One donor must have donated many items, uh, and an item may have no donors or one donor. An item must have just one donor. And an item must be, um, uh, an, an item is partial, it has a partial participation. I mean, it's not total because they said that item could not, uh, the, an, an item, if it's given, it's, it could be donated or it could not be donated. So it could, uh, like, uh, it could not have any more donors. So it, it's not partial, uh, like, sorry, the, the participation is partial, it's not total, but a donor must donate something or else why would they be called donors, right? All right, so, okay, so there are three, there are persons other than employees, volunteers, and donors who are of interest to the organization so that a person does not need to belong, does not belong to any of these three groups. All right, so as we can suggest, so uh, as it suggests that um, 
they're per their person other than employee so it won't be a double line it'll be a single line so let's just rub it off so it will just be one single line and uh, on the other hand at a given time a person may belong to two or two or more of these groups so the constraint that we have is that it's overlapping means an, a person could be an employee or a volunteer at the same time or a volunteer or a donor at the same time or three of them at the same time right so yeah uh, that's about it it was really simple i guess but i hope it covered some of the parts it will be easy your e e r diagrams are easy uh, and uh, these are the typical kind of questions that occur and at the end of the question they said write down assumptions if any you make in the answer so this this was kind of our, our assumption like a donor do, a donor has to donate something so this is this was our assumption so at the end you could just write assumptions that a donor has to donate something so you just write that and then that was our assumption that was our only assumption but other things were pretty much clear and specific uh, this was the only thing that was kind of vague and we had to um, um, on our own kind of like uh, assume that this was a uh, total participation. Anyway, I hope you understood uh, how EER diagrams could be, questions could be solved and I hope you ace your exams knowing that you kind of learned something and uh, please like and subscribe if you want more tutorials and the schema diagram tutorial is coming out. Thank you for watching.